Uh, all right, let's get started. Uh, welcome to ACF Chat Fridays. Uh, for those of you who are your first time, we kind of do this every other week. It's uh, office hours. Uh, there's me, uh, Ian Paulson here. He is our, our product manager. Uh, and we've got a couple of devs in. we got Ant Pichel. Uh, Damon Cook is a uh, DevRel for ACF, so helps us with documentation, as you've probably seen from, from some of his workshops. I'll get him to, to post a link in chat to his most recent one that he did this week. Uh, and we've got Mike Davey, who is our content editor, who looks after the uh, blog and docs and every everything content related on ACF.com, but basically. Uh, I'm Liam, uh, one of the senior devs of ACF. Uh, we're focusing th this week on ACF blocks, which hopefully uh, some of you use. I hope for, I was going to say all of you, but some of you, let's start there. And hopefully by the end of today, the rest of you will want to be using SEF blocks. So, uh, uh, yeah. I think we've, we've spoken a bit in, in recent weeks and months about our roadmap uh, for, for SEF blocks. We've talked to you a lot about how WordPress is changing and we've seen things like the new admin that are, it's more React based and how we're kind of feeling a bit legacy inside the block editor right now with our legacy jQuery components and uh, WordPress 6.3 bringing in the new uh, iframe if possible means we can't really load those, uh, those jQuery components anymore. So trying to figure out how we can kind of migrate towards a more React based from our side point of view so things feel more native and uh more kind of entwined with the rest of the block editor experience um so today we're going to talk a little bit about that side of things we're currently working on on the acf 6.3 uh which will have some more kind of more immediate things um we're going to add component support so if you're building a headless site and you want to render your uh, headless components inside ACF templates, then uh, then you can do that. We're going to fix block validation, which I know has been a, a pain point for an awful lot of people in that block validation is a bit ropey right now. doesn't really work. Uh, and we've been waiting on Gutenberg to add some some hooks to make that easier for us to do. That And they have, uh, there was one got merged a couple of weeks ago. We're going to be contributing some more. We're also going to do it ourselves to make sure we, we maintain back back and pat with the uh, WordPress 5.8, which is our new minimum supported version. Um, we're also going to enable saving uh, fields from a block to the page meta rather than to the block itself. We've had that asked by a few users who don't want to deal with the meta box anymore and just want to have like a fixed block at the top of the page or, or you know, somewhere else. It's going to say the site editor, but I don't know how you would store that data on the post page meta in that point, you probably wouldn't be able to. So ignore that one. Um uh and yeah, we were trying to and uh, improve that experience. So that's that's kind of the more immediate things. Longer term, we are wanting to replace our fields, uh, you know, date pickers that are currently jQuery with native WordPress components because they already exist. Uh, and ideally move from rendering a HTML edit form that gets loaded by Ajax. Uh, into JavaScript on the front end, so that all feels much more native. Um, we've been experimenting a little bit with inline editing. We know that that's a request that a lot of people have, and we're trying to figure out how we can enable that in a way that makes sense. It would likely have to be opt-in because we'd want, uh, basically, as you probably know, if you're using a PHP template with ACF, you could completely change what the template looks like based on a select toggle or a, a checkbox changing value. And if we were doing that in line, then it would be a bit weird if you're typing in a text box and suddenly the the entire page changed around you because you've entered a value that was that was you know matching what you were looking for in your template. So there's a lot of kind of nuance to the things we want to do, and we have to try and make sure we do it carefully and maintain backwards compatibility at every step. Uh yeah, I, can, I think from that point, I can kind of open the floor and we can, if you've got questions or feature requests, anything on that, then uh, yeah, feel free to unmute or raise a hand or whatever you want to do. We've got the uh, Q&A, right, Ian? 
at the bottom of the your Zoom window. Feel free to click that, and you can type a question if you want. Yeah, D depends on your Zoom version. If you maybe on a l l earlier version, you don't see the Q and A button, but just feel free to drop stuff in the chat if you don't see that. But yeah, and there is that reaction where you can raise your hand and we'll we'll come to you, and you can unmute and it's a small enough group for everyone to chat if necessary. Yeah, exactly. We've got one question from Diego already. Uh, are you considering the possibility of having two templates, one for the editor and one for the front end, like we have with React blocks? You could, um, I think it would be interesting to get some more context on, on what you mean there. Do you mean having a, a JavaScript template or do you mean having a different PHP template in both places? Because if, if it's the PHP side, you can kind of do that already, right? We already have a is preview is a, a global variable that exists in the template and you could switch on that to change the template for each side. Yeah, so yeah, okay, PHP template, yeah, you could definitely do uh, toggle on the is preview variable that's available in the in the, in the PHP template and uh, swap that over. Any other questions or feature requests, I guess, for, for blocks? One of, one of the things we're figuring out at this point is the changes that we need to try and contribute to Gutenberg core, because there's a lot of things that, that we want to achieve from a UX point of view that are likely to need core changes. For example, like, uh, you know, that sidebar, the width of that sidebar is already an issue, as you've probably noticed, if you try to put a gallery field in or some people try to put flexible content in there. Please don't do that. But some people always try to use flexible content in that sidebar, and that is equally painful. So trying to figure out a way to uh, to let you edit that in the, in a wider sidebar is probably one of our our goals there. interesting question here from Earl. Um, as you move more towards a React-based experience, is the tentative plan to try and support backwards compat in a way that existing ECF blocks will just work? Or would the existing ones then become sort of legacy and we need to rebuild in this new react focus way? Yeah, good question, Earl. And um, that is, so if, if it depends on how you built your blocks right now, I think is the honest answer. ACF's always been about back compat and we'll focus on that as hard as we can. The one the one place I think is going to be really tough for us to maintain back to, backwards compatibility is if you're using JavaScript APIs, because they currently provide you jQuery objects, and those jQuery objects aren't really going to exist in ACF blocks v3 or whatever we call it. Um, this is not, it's not an immediate thing to worry about, but there is definitely a, a kind of point that unless you can load JavaScript into an iframe, WordPress wants to use an iframe now for displaying your blocks. And that's one of the issues that we're having with ACF is that trying to load, you know, a date picker just doesn't work. So you can't even load the core libraries in there. So trying to trying to figure out a way of, of making that work is probably infeasible. And we'll provide like React hooks for folks that do want to get into more, you know, triggering things that happen on ACF template loads. But if you're just using uh a, you know, a standard template with PHP, uh, that would, we'll make sure that's back compatible for as long as we can. Uh, Diego asks, if we've got a rough estimate of when we'll start seeing WordPress components on ACF blocks. Uh, one of the downsides of using inner blocks for canvas editing is that a HTML markup gets saved with the database and prevents blocks that are already being used from showing the updates. WordPress components should solve this. Um, yeah, I'm just going to reread that that last bit again. Could you could you explain a little bit more about how you're outputting HTML markup that then doesn't get used when you update it? 
I think that's a, I think I need to understand a bit more about that one. Uh, as for the rough estimate of when we'll have React components, obviously we've got to make sure we do that in a back compat way. It's it's after 6.3. Um, we suspect we'll start some of that work because th there's obviously simple things that we kind of get really easily right now, right? If you want to add a, a text field, that component inside the WordPress storybook component library, it's, it's already pretty sound and it's it's pretty simple. So for things like that, we can we can add relatively quickly. Trying to build out that kind of back compat library so that you can still use legacy HTML fields as well as the the React side is where the, the complication comes for us that we don't really know how long it's going to take at this point. Um, but we'll, yeah, we'll make sure that that does exist, right? So if a field is available to use React, then we'll use React. If not, we'll fall back to the legacy uh, HTML. And we kind of have to do that for third party fields, right? There's so many of them out there. You have the font awesome and, and that kind of thing and need to make sure that they carry on working. Uh, Jacob asks, any chance we get a hook to change the UI of pre-existing ACF field types added to presentation? I think I saw a similar request to that earlier. So that, that one's interesting because the, the way a, an ACF field is rendered is through render field, which is on the component class itself. Tr giving a hook to change that. I mean, we probably could, we could probably wrap that in a, you know, essentially pass that to you, you know, the, the complete HTML output before it's sent through to the front end. You could do it right now by overriding, you know, by extending the class uh, and overriding the method to, to, you know, however you wanted to output it. Uh, and that would apply everywhere it's used. That's probably the easiest way and the kind of the most reliable way, because then you're not going to rely on us to render it. There might well already be a, a field there, actually. I, I just don't know off the top of my head. Uh, cool. Let me mark some of these as done so I can see. Any other questions or things that you're doing in the block editor right now that you know you feel like we can improve? Hi. Yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry. I guess I just have, I guess I just have a a question or just maybe an explanation about I know you deprecated ACF register block type and are proposing to use block.json to define that stuff instead. I'm just wondering why you decided to do that. It's not really a big deal, but it just seems silly to write it in JSON and then have PHP parse the JSON to get it back into PHP. So that's purely because that's the way WordPress recommend registering blocks now, right? Yeah. Uh, we we try to we try to be as close to their experience as possible because we we want to feel like we're part of WordPress. So whilst we've deprecated it, we have no intention of removing it. It's if WordPress ever remove it, the, the reason we have to officially say it's deprecated. Got it. And, and, and the use of block.json means that you get all of the, the new stuff that comes from WordPress, like the core blocks, you know, the attributes, everything comes via block.json. So we are kind of piggybacking very easily and nicely on that. And, uh, the, you know, when we weren't doing the block.json method before ACF 6.0, you know, lots of users were saying, how can we do this? And how can we get this attribute? And and actually that that just allowed us to to make it a lot easier for you guys. Gotcha. There's also one extra yeah. part of that that we're not using right now, but I know a lot of people would be happy to hear this, is that we'll, we're going to publish uh, an official JSON schema for block.json with ACF so that it makes it easier for you to, to your IDE to pick up and know how to edit it. We've had a few folks have already contributed GitHub issues for us to take over, but you know, they've already written one and, and done. So we'll, we'll merge one of those in and uh, and maintain it going forward to make it easier for folks to know what they should be doing in blog.json. Cause it, you know, it can be a bit crazy if you, the amount of supports that exists now, for example. And and also like in the, in the register from meta, you can define all the properties that are in blog.json in that function, right? 
So like if you have something that's dynamic and needs to be generated by PHP, you can just define that like and omit it from the block.json. And I, I believe that just works all the same because that's how I do translations with like the, the block name and the block description because you can't translate in the JSON. You can define it though in that register function. Uh, so Earl asks, is there any plans to improve the admin Ajax response uh, of the block fields markup where it delivers the entire markup for the block? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I Once we're in a component world, we can deliver that because we can just store a local cache of, of every ACF field and its React component and not have to worry about anything server side. So we can deliver that through globally into the block editor. Essentially, I think the end goal is that that Ajax endpoint just doesn't exist anymore because it, we shouldn't be rendering HTML for the edit form on the server side. It's a it's kind of a, a, a needless and expensive. I don't know if you've seen the size of some of those forms, especially if you've got tabs and repeaters and all that kind of stuff. And if we can move that into into the React components, then we don't need to, to send that over. If you've got blocks that are saved in edit mode, especially the, the size of the DOM that you get back in, in the preload is, it can be huge. You know, we've seen like 10 megabytes before for folks that have really complicated blocks. So absolutely. I also want to make it not be admin ajax.php. It should be a native rest endpoint, right? Like it's uh, it's very, it's very legacy. It, it's a trivial thing. It's just something that's always bothered me. Um, I see a, a question in the sidebar here about with block.json style, uh, why do block.json style and scripts of the blocks load on each page, even if the block is not included? I've hit this in the past with some of the blocks that I've built, and I, I've just wrapped the, the register function in a if has po or if has block, and then like do a check on if that post has the block, and then enqueue all the stuff. So you could possibly just wrap that in a check. There's also, weirdly, there is a filter that enables that to happen by default, and it's called uh, Damon's put a link in the, under the question called the VP should load separate core block assets. Oh, yeah, yeah, and it, totally. It's interesting. I don't quite understand why it's called core block assets. Uh, I must ask somebody. It should that be all, point. huh? <laughs> yeah, because it does work on all blocks. Uh, it's it's essentially a performance thing, I think, is my, my understanding of it, is because when that's enabled, it has to go through and kind of be aware of every block on the page before it outputs a block. Whereas by default, it just wants to output the block and not have to think, you know, not have to pre-pass it essentially to understand what blocks are going to be there first. Uh, Brian asks, can you point to a resource of all the supports that can be to ACF blocks, things like font weight and font value for typography that are under the experimental flag? We can do that. It's, it's It would be tough for us to maintain, I think. Uh, I can talk to Mike about that. The the essentially the tipping point is if it's something that is in the sidebar when you enable it it appears in the sidebar that will almost certainly work if it's something that would add a toolbar option that's something that we have to add code for and if you find any of those flag them to us because we'll we'll look at enabling it you know we're not against doing that um but yeah it's that's kind of the general split is toolbar things we have to implement and support uh, anything in the sidebar, you know, typography, all that kind of stuff. Even the experimental stuff should just work. Although obviously you should, when you write the code, make sure you add the non-experimental version on the or and, and swap it over. We can give an example of that. I think a couple of my examples use experimental stuff. Um, and yeah, just, just wrap it in a, a, a way to make sure that it will still work at the point that it's not experimental anymore. Uh, anything else? Let me just catch up on chat. Yeah, I'm looking at um Michael's comment here. Yeah, Michael, how are you? How are you handling compiling assets and things like that? It's something I've wanted to look at for a while. It's kind of publish a, a rough how to on a single webpack entry point that could take care of however many blocks you've got in your theme or plugin. And, and handle the rendering. I wonder if, uh, if, if one of those, yeah, someone's already done one of those that, that we could riff off or point people to. Okay. Yeah. So using gulp and then presumably just you've written a custom build script. 
Yeah, I got something public if you want to see it. Yeah, we'll yeah. Pull it Feel up. free. Uh, drop us a tweet of it, and I'll, I'll I'll dig into it. I yeah, think, I can um, jump in. Sorry. Yeah, so go and go for it. No, yeah, um, I'm using a similarly. I'm using a Laravel mix um, just to compile. Nice. We use SAS and, and JavaScript that we combine, um, and so yeah, I just got kind of a common library in the in the root of my plugin that has just some some basic you know common assets that they use, and then I compile individual instances of the scripts for each block. Cool. Yeah, I think if we we did the, we should give more direction on that because I think that would be very useful to folks because it is a it's a kind of a pain point if you're new to the tooling side of things, right? that you're kind of forced into because you have to have things like the asset.php file for every JS file that you want to include. And that is, you get for free if you're using WordPress scripts, but there are a lot of folks that already have tooling and build systems for the rest of their theme. So trying to trying to kind of plug the blocks into that and not having to run it as a separate thing would be useful. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll dig into that and then try and get a doc up on that. I put my link to the file in my, in the chat there. Nice. Awesome. Thanks. I'll take a minute with that. Basically, just a glob for the blocks directory in my theme and look for files that way. Does it does it build, uh, does it use scripts, WordPress scripts, so that you get the uh, block uh, script.asset.php as well? Uh, I don't think I understand. No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Yes. I, that's just if you included custom JavaScript inside your block then you or you have to register the like, dependencies oh, a... oh, 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 oh i see what you're saying yeah so in so like if you look in this repo here there's a directory called blocks and then there's something called text image block and then everything for it is in there and there's a php file in there that handles registering the script needed for that ah, okay cool yeah that you makes sense i mean yeah nice so that kind of just all ties it all together. <laughs> yeah, and then obviously, you know, if, you, if you're building a lot of sites, you're going to have your own tooling and, and stuff in place. So trying to kind of figure out a way to extend that easily for the folks that want to have start building block libraries. Yeah, and Gulp still works. I haven't bothered looking into Webpack because <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. We we try to push people towards it just because it's what WordPress is using. Yeah, right? uh, we, we're trying to. I get that, <laughs> <laughs> and, and WordPress scripts is is quite quite useful as a as a package as a whole. You know, there's a bunch of stuff it gives you for free. Yeah, yeah. Likewise, I've been creating just I've just been manually creating the assets file, so I, I did not know that there was something uh, that there was a better way to live. So I'll be looking into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool. Um, we also want to make it easier for your block to include fields that are specific to the block. We're, we're currently digging into into ways of doing that, you know, whether it's a, a custom export that you can just drop into the folder or whether we just let you export any field group, drop it into your block and we'll detect it and override its location rules to apply it to that block. I have to get that one past Dale, our UX designer, to, to, to see how he thinks that would, you know, users would expect that to work. I had a, a question that I'd like to ask everybody, if possible. Um, obviously, we've been putting UIs on things that didn't have UIs um, up until recently. So in 6.2, we added a UI to to the um, the plugin to allow you to create options pages from the UI, from the admin, rather than with code for options pages in ACF Pro. And we did it for 6.1 for um, custom post types and taxonomies, if you want to register those to ACF now. I'd like to sort of know from people how they would feel about a, a UI to register blocks rather than having to create a block.json uh, and, and kind of do that stuff in the file system. Would Are they using perhaps ACF extended already that allows you to create blocks from the UI? And is that something that, you know, you, you would you would uh, value in ACF? And just feel free to just drop stuff in the chat if, if that's easier. Yeah, we do. We got a lot of thoughts about how we could present a UI anyway for blocks. You know, if, if it didn't handle creation, just let you see the blocks that are enabled that are ACF. One of the things that I don't like about blocks is that if anything goes wrong during registration, you probably don't know about it until you try and use it in the block editor, and it's just not there. 
So, so giving you a nicer UI that kind of gives you an overview of, of every ACF block um, and the fields assigned to it, whether we let you edit the fields, yeah, there or not, is probably an opt-in thing because there's going to be some folks that do want, yeah, just a fixed set of blocks. It's a, uh, the whole creation of a block UI is obviously more complicated because it will be the first time that there's a UI that has to interact with the file system in some way. So that brings its own complexities because uh, it still has to produce a blog.json, right? It's not just stuff we can store to the database like every other ACF admin screen. I'd be curious too, like since blocks are something that a lot of people will move around place to place, um, if like a WPCLI command would be uh, another alternative where it just generates you a plugin with everything set up uh, with the webpack and all that config, like just done for you. Yeah, I, Mike in chat said, um, you know, ACF is a developer plugin, so I mean, you know, if everything starts to feel like bloat at some point. And I, I get that as well. It's why I pushed hard to make sure that everything that we've added recently, you know, post types and taxonomies and options pages, if you turn them off in the, as an ACF setting to find a filter that that just disables them, I think you can find that on, on all the, the release documentation. It will just not load anything, not even the classes that... that in, you know, that provide all that functionality. So you end up with essentially it just not existing. So there's no extra bloat there for folks that don't want to use that. Uh, Cause you know, if you're an agency, you probably aren't going to use UI options pages, you know, cause you've already got code in, in your functions and your boilerplate thing, uh, your boilerplate set up for a new theme that is going to give you what you need already. And also looking at the responses, it's quite, you know, it, it's tricky building things for people because there's there's a real split in the chat there. There's, you know, first couple of people, yes, definitely plus one for me. Mike's point that you call out, you know, don't need UI for everything. It's a developer tool. Jacob, quite rightly, probably it would add less value than other features. Um, and yeah, the, the beauty of Christoph's response where he said, I'm using CPT and taxonomy UI more than I thought I would. So it's like the things that you didn't think you need until actually it's there and then it makes life easier. And I, so, yeah, it's hard. And this is kind of, it's interesting for us to 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 take this sort of straw poll. I think one of the one of the real benefits to a UI, even if it isn't something that, you know, it's actually saving blocks to your file system, is a way to see everything that is supported, right? Because that could, I think we've done a really good job on, on post tax and taxonomies and options pages in kind of exposing in human readable terms, what each of those options do that you, you know, you probably use, don't know every detail of, of it. And I think we, we spent a lot of time in, in UX thinking about what, what tabs things should go in and, and all that kind of stuff. So having that for blocks, I think would be beneficial because I suspect there's an awful lot of things that folks don't realize they could be supporting, you know, whether that's typography colors and, or more, more obscure WordPress supports. I was going to try and pluck one there, and I was like, well, actually, I can't think of any because they're all quite obscure. I could see a lot of folks wanting, like, that export option and, and like, building their setup and then doing the export or, like, the, the generate PHP option and then just turn everything off after they're done. Like, that's that's a valid way to build, too. Like, and, and then you don't have to worry about all that bloat and you've got a clean interface to work within. Yeah, exactly. And especially as, as blocks are more reusable as a as a kind of feature, right? Like post types and things like that are more likely to be specific to a build you're working on. Whereas if you've got like a header block or you're building a carousel block or tabs or whatever, having having that reusable across a project needs to be easier, I think. Yeah, as uh, as Michael's saying that local JSON is the biggest thing. When I was at WordCamp US, folks were like, I, I want an easier way to move my blocks around site to site. I'm like, oh, I've got the thing for you, local JSON. <laughs> yeah, that that implementation actually of local JSON is what the thing that's gonna enable us to make uh, blocks load their own JSON much easier. We'll, uh, we'll just kind of piggyback onto that and detect that that block is now a location that fields could be loaded from. I like that set up via UI ship via JSON. <laughs>
yeah, that's that's very really useful to know. Yeah, and and Mike makes a good point that obviously with with what everyone's saying about the UI would be helpful. He would prefer, you know, the the what we've talked about native components, the back end speed, all those things to be more of a higher priority, which I think, yeah, it's a very fair comment. Damon, we haven't mentioned AI for ages. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone used tried using it AI for ACF? I used it, I tried it once to generate me an ACF block and it just made up a whole bunch of stuff. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes I've, I've I'll be honest, done it. Some of the stuff it made up, I was like, oh man, that's a really cool idea. We should implement that. Yeah, same. It's so funny. I, I have found it, it it does do like like filters and stuff like that. If I want to turn stuff off in ACF, it's super fast for that. Um like that it gets right. Block.json, no. <laughs> Kind of gross how it does things. Oh, I missed one. Oh, thanks. Okay. Uh, yeah, Damon uh, added a link in the Q and A to the block support. So we just paste that in chat. I don't know if you did that as well, Damon. Does that does that doc include the experimental stuff? Probably. Oh no, it does. Okay. Things like duo tones and things like that. I'm not sure how well you integrate that with ACF, but I'd encourage folks to keep an eye on the block.json. I feel like every time I look at that uh that documentation in WordPress, it changes and there's something new I didn't know about. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna paste that here. And once we've got a schema published, obviously it's going to be based on the, the official blog.json schema just with ACF added on bits. Uh, that should be easier to, to at least track and maybe explore and play with a little bit. Is anyone, uh, is anyone building headless sites at the moment with React components and thinking that they will make it, you know, take advantage of being able to load those same components into into the back end and have ACF pass all the block data to it. Nice Jordan. I will uh I'll use you as a as a beta tester then. We'll uh, we'll dive in and, and see. I've only I only kind of touched the surface of headless really. I haven't kind of got into to building uh custom components yet. So looking forward to that. All right, we've got about 10 minutes left. Any other questions? Any other conversation points anyone's got? Anyone doing anything especially cool with ACF blocks that is a bit out of the ordinary? I mean, I made a tab block, but it's just one block. And you do, it's based on which location it is. It's like if it's next to other tab blocks, and then it merges them all together to make the tabs. Oh, nice. Oh, like block side by side. Like it's, it's aware of a previous block and next block. Yeah. So like if you have nice. three blocks in a row, that makes three tabs. But then if you split one of those away, then the three tabs turns into two and then one, which doesn't make sense. How does that view in the, in the back end? Is, are they just on top of each other? Or they, they go in together? Um, I mean, on the back end, in the past, I've just been, I punted on making it work in the actual editor itself because it's just me who deals with that stuff. Yeah, no, so that's like, tough. <laughs> is preview tab block goes here. Um, but I'm working more on getting it to be, to look in the back end as it does in the front end. So, and the trick is you do and that you can, by, oh, go ahead. You, you could do inner blocks, uh, like, so you could have a container that was your tabs and then inside of those could be inner blocks of tabs. And then you'd have your full context contained in that one container. Yeah. But then you'd have to have multiple blocks. So yeah, I just have two, a tab block. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, you would have a tab container and then tab block. Is the, the secret way I is I do that, too. but I just do that. I put that block around it um, behind the scenes. 
So like as it's rendering, wrap, um, we'll find all those tab blocks and then wrap those in a, another block that's not meant for people to actually use. Yeah, that makes sense. That's how you pull that off. Yeah, we've been, um, we had someone ask us about um, like using an accordion and how to get the same representation in the, the sidebar. I really should know the name of it. What's it called? The uh, <laughs> document overview, apparently. Mouse over it and get its title. So yeah, the outline view essentially that shows you your blocks and where things are nested. Uh, and that is that's an issue right now. I think ACF supports it generally. You know, we'll we'll show the icon and the block name. But if you do, if you're using in the blocks with lots of children, then it can kind of get a bit out of sync. So it's showing that in a nice way is uh, is on the list as well. Did anyone go to WordCamp US? Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah, it was really fun. Great time. I was did surprised like uh, how many people were like coming up and talking about ACF. I mean, I knew everyone uses ACF, but it was just cool to see it because you know we're, we're hearing our laptops person, every right? day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you like the talks? Yeah, they were really good. Um, security one was good. The uh, there's a few really good ones. I only caught like two or three because I, I was just having so much fun talking to people about how they were using ACF. Yeah. Like, and also that that uh sponsor room was like half a mile from the actual talks. So that I had to fun. gauge if I wanted to like use my legs that much. <laughs> yeah, it's all about the hallway track. Yeah, me and Ian get to go to, to Europe and we send some of the, the US folks. Matt was there as well, who is currently on the holiday. I'm very jealous. But uh, yeah, you should see us hopefully at uh, every Europe and, and US work camp. We'll try and try and have a presence there. I imagine so, I yeah. Haven't, I haven't missed a US yet, so I'm going to try and keep that going. <laughs> well, that's nice. cool. Uh, we got another comment here from Michael. Uh, I just switched over to full site editing, but I still had PHP style stuff that I wanted to have in my theme. So I sort of cheated by creating a header and a footer acf box just sneak in my legacy Ooh, that's clever yeah that's really nice i don't think um i, don't, I haven't really explored the site editor and, and those kind of components as much as i should they they changed it in 6.3 right it's uh they changed the way headers and footers work or am i making that up i swear i saw something about that earlier today i don't remember But uh, yeah, ACF blocks do does work in the in the site editor and and should give you a, a, the same experience. The only thing you can't do is see that edit form because the site editor is iframe and we can't load the jQuery stuff. That is the reason we're going to have to move to native components anyway. So once uh, once that's done, we'll have our solution everywhere. Nice. Well, we'll keep the conversation going uh, over on Twitter on. Uh, on our other social medias. Uh, Ian, I'm looking at you here to see what they are. YouTube channel, where, where else? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'd, if you've got actual you know, feature requests or improvements that you want to suggest, I, I posted a link to the feedback uh, page on the Advanced Custom Fields site. That's probably a good place for the specific stuff, but we are very active on Twitter. So yeah, hit us up on, uh, where is it? Twitter, oh, WP. Yeah, we've got, yeah, we'll reply on there, but we and we're here every two weeks as part of ACF Chat Fridays, which is basically oh. office hours. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Jordan. Twitter doesn't exist anymore now. Ian. Get, get the name. Right. I don't know. Come on. As long as Twitter.com resolves to Twitter.com, it's yeah. Twitter. <laughs> and is it X or is it ten? Like no one's told me, so oh, I'm true. Just going for Twitter. <laughs> I think I think you, that should be your personal branding. Ian, is to call follow me on ten. Just just say that to everybody and just make it your thing. Ten. What's ten? I want to be on ten. <laughs> but we'll, yeah, we'll keep the conversation going over there. If you ever get any feedback or, or questions, feel free to ping us. As I said, this is kind of a longer term goal, but we'll keep you updated in ACF Chat Fridays uh, as as we go along and, and kind of try and show you progress where we can. You'll see some of this stuff start to come in in ACF six three when that comes. Uh, probably early next year. Yeah, we very early in that kind of targeting the dates. But uh, yeah, looking forward to it. It's it's a it's an exciting time uh, for the future of ACF blocks.
and yeah, that's Mike's Mike's new Slack, uh, modern WP dev dot co slash Slack. Uh, if you want to join that, there's a, a couple of, well, I'm in there. As I say, a couple of devs. I think I'm the only one for now, but I'm sure there'll be more soon. Well, now uh, I'm yeah. trying. Yeah, Joey, Joey, Joey runs it. Uh, he is a big ACF blocks user and is very active on Twitter, asking uh, asking questions for us and along with uh, Creative Dive, one of our other GitHub users, who, was, who already gave me a list of feedback because he couldn't be here today. So yeah, thanks to everybody that uses Blocks. We, you, know, you guys are really passionate about ACF and really help motivate us to keep going because it's it's cool to see the things you're doing with it. So. Well, thanks for making such an awesome product or maintaining it or however you want to own it. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, we're the stewards of it. We love yeah, it. Stewards of it. Everybody else. Yeah. That's a nice way of putting it. Yeah, I, I also, don't think it's too big to say that ACF is if you're if you're a serious WordPress developer, ACF is like indispensable. It 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 is a, a necessity. So thank you. Awesome, thank you. Uh, yeah, and you'll also see our contribution efforts in in Gutenberg Core. I suspect over the over the coming weeks as we start to kind of figure out the the filters and hooks we need to get added so that we can do the things we need to do. I think yeah, we're kind of get, up. Yeah, getting us to a point where we're we're contributing back to, to Gutenberg is is high on high on the agenda. Uh, purely because we 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 yeah, we have a pretty unique insight into the things developers want to do. And I think that that has been kind of missing from a lot of the the current production Gutenberg features. So. Awesome. Anything else from you, Ian? Anything to wrap up? No, that's been really good. Thanks for running that, Liam. That's been that's been great, everyone. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, see you in two weeks. We'll, we'll let you know what Thanks, the topic yeah. is. And have a good weekend. Enjoy Labor Day for the US yeah. crew. Bye. Thanks, folks.